Okay, um, thank you, Joey. Um, today I'm going to talk about how to invite people into your brand universe. So if you are a brand, which you most probably are, um, how to do this. And um, the name is from lead gen to recurring clients. Or in other words, um, how to plan, build and analyze sales funds for online shops. And basically everybody else, because what works for online shops should work for almost everybody. Um, my name is Alex Hammerschmidt and I'm the co-founder of Hardmode.io. Um, and I love working on business automation systems. Um, I do this since 2012, so I started um, actually as an architect and started automating uh, things in, um, in the projects we did back then. And so I did this for 10 years in my life and then I thought nah, I need to do something else because architecture is very poor, which is bad. <laughs> um, yeah, but this is in general the, 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 or this is probably the, the reason why I like planning and building bigger structures uh, so much. Um, I'm a husband and father of two lovely girls, and um, I love tea, I love golf. I really think that golf is one of the most incredible sports in the world, even though in Europe everybody thinks it's only for old people or for rich people, which is not necessarily true. Um, but I have way too less time to hit the ball on the golf course, so I guess there is still some things which we can automate in our own uh, marketing automation business. So, um, what is the most important uh, ingredient to sell online? It's a question. It's a question, yeah. It even has uh, a question mark. <laughs> So it's trust. So um, we earn trust by giving information and helping people to overcome fears or problems. And trust is something we earn over time. And the more we interact with um, people, the more trust is built in a very natural way and yeah, this is basically um, basic psychology so it's it's something that just happens so if you manage to talk to somebody more and more and more over time you will gain trust and here is someone um, who makes this extremely good and he is uh, the biggest um, coffee influencer in the Dach region and he also lives on Cyprus like I do and he became a very dear friend in the last two years to me and my wife and uh, this is Anne. He is uh, the founder of the incredible successful blog coffeeness.de and he started his blogger career back in 2008 where most people thought that every website is either from, an each, from, from a big company which wants to sell you something or by some geek who wants to talk about tech stuff. There was not so much out there back then um, like it is today. And uh, he learned a lot over the last 13 years of publishing content um, inside of his niche, which is coffee. And he is by far the, the best SEO I know, so like search, op, uh, search engine optimization. And um, yeah, and I, 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 in Cyprus there are a lot of SEOs, and so he is by far the guy I go to if I have some questions. Um, and this is one of the reasons why he's. Um, website is so incredibly successful. Um, Arne is a major affiliate for a lot of super automatic coffee 
machine companies. So like these machines, they're on the side. He would probably say, no, nah, don't use this one. <laughs> and um, to create the best coffee experience you can actually have without even leaving your kitchen and in your pajamas, that's his goal to show you how to do this, basically. And he um, decided... Um, a moment. <laughs> so that's, that's what he does. And therefore, he decided to sell his own coffee um, almost a year ago. So last December, he started um, building his own real coffee brand. And he's bootstrapping all of this, which is a huge undertaking because it needs a lot of money because you need to buy and make the coffee and so on and so forth. And um, he started to bootstrap. Um, so he found it's the only possibility to keep the price low of the product and the, um, the quality of the product this high so that it meets his personal expectations. And at this point, we stepped in to help him plan the marketing besides his own amazing website and social media channels. So the first thing we made, and this is what we're doing for each of our clients, is we made a drawing of the necessary uh, campaigns and funnels. In this case, it's four campaigns to um, sell his coffee to his subscribers eventually. And this process consists of uh, seven points. First of all, the blueprint, so we need to plan everything. Then um, lead magnets, then warm up, the first sale, analyze, sell again, and in the end, fall in love. So these are the seven points we're going through. And Arne stated at the beginning his goal to us, what he wants to achieve for 2021, which was, he said, to us, I want to sell 100 kilos of cafe a day, of coffee a day. And we said, yeah, that's ambitious. And his goal in the middle of January, which was very, very quick. <laughs> and um, so, but how to, how to reach that and how to basically maintain that, it's, it's, it's actually not that, not that difficult to do this. And um, so let's go through the process. So the first thing is the blueprint, obviously. So we need to plan um, the thing. And as an architect, or the, the process, and as an architect, I'm aware of how important planning actually is. And with the blueprint, um, you know, without the blueprint, you start to improvise and you start to mess around with things. So um, it's easy to get lost instead of overlooking the whole process and instead of focusing on what you actually need to do. Need to do. So this is the blueprint for Anna's coffee. And we didn't build a gigantic structure with loads of campaigns and different things to reach our door. Um, we did the opposite. We tried to make it very small, very direct, and um, as for in, in his case. And this blueprint gives us three main benefits. So the first one is it's planable, so in terms of um, you can plan where you need to put money in, where you need to put people onto, and how to execute everything. It, it's outsourceable. So I think the second point is what's so important in marketing, or yes, in selling. Make sure that you plan your, your marketing campaign beforehand, build it, and from there, iterate and 
so you can outsource. If you know what to do, you can tell other people what they should build or what they should draw or copy or write or whatever. So, second point is the lead magnets. So, to invite leads from his website, because his website has almost 800,000 visitors a month, which is mind blowing. But obviously, not every of these visitors is interested in. You can directly buy from the website your super coffee machine if you are interested in finding the one you want to purchase. So, um, therefore, we need to create a lead magnet which some people would enjoy and would help them to overcome their problem, which actually is um, how to use the coffee maker, which I just purchased for 3,000 euros and the coffee still doesn't. Um, therefore, we talked to him and asked him, okay, what can we do to create these laser-focused lead magnets to really get to the problem of your leads and help them, actually. So we asked him, what can we do to say no to almost everybody who is visiting your website, basically? Because as we learned before in Muhammad's um, um, talk, it's not very smart to have a huge list with the majority very uninterested uh, in your email. So it's, it's good to say, to, to build barriers I know it's it's very tempting if you have so many people on uh, so many so many visitors on your website. It's very tempting to create a, an enormous list uh, with emails, but it doesn't make sense. It makes more sense to find actually the the thing which these few potential buyers or potential customers would want. So, that's the part one of our drawing, so let's go in there. Um, so we build this, these are only squiggles, so his, his person, that's only for the presentation, his personal brand does look a little bit different, and on his website the form looks a little bit different, but anyway. Um, we decided to make these um, setting guides and in the beginning, we only planned that we are going to make the settings, guys. <laughs> but people are willing to put themselves on the waiting list, which is very interesting. Because their problem is actually that big, and they really need to solve it. Because you know, get frustrated if your coffee doesn't taste that good, and you're, um, in your mind it should be, actually. And you just don't know how to use it. So we created this drop-down with the most important machines in, I think it's 35 at the moment, which are there. And at the moment there are only six settings, guys. But people are putting themselves on the waiting list, so we can, we can start selling to them, actually, um, the settings and how to think about the machine and so on and so forth. So they come here. And I just said we can start selling, but it's too early at this point. So people put and or people would opt into your lead magnet, and it's very tempting to say, let's do it like the marketers in the 90s and just direct sell immediately because it's so good the idea, so let's give it a shot. But actually, we want to build trust because we are in it for the long game or for the long run. We want to create people who love honest product. So we don't want to have one cell and or one sale and then just let them go. So it would be very unpolite and not nice to sell immediately. So what do we need to do? We need to warm up. We need to warm up and nurture. We want to create an environment where people want to hang out actually. And this is the newsletter in this case, or the, this is the emails. So, um, we are here in the second, or in the first funnel now. So, the warm-up funnel consists of several 
actions you need to build. And Mautic is so nice because you can build all of it. You can be so creative, and that's what I so much appreciate uh, about, about Mautic. And obviously, we start because we are in the European Union, we are GDPR compliant, so we start doing a double opt in. Double opt-in function, and this is, I think, discussed on the forum and everywhere a thousand times. So let's just skip that. <clears throat> but after the double opt-in, after people say, "Okay, I'm actually interested in getting your emails," we just send them each day one email per day, and it's very important what's written in these emails. We cannot just um, send them stuff they already know. So we need to create a user journey which we want to which we want them to walk through and this needs to be in the emails. So each email should only um, hold content which is super valuable for a person who wants to learn something about how to use a coffee machine, how to make or how to get the best out of the cheapest beans I can purchase and of course the best beans I can purchase and how to do that. And they are, I mean, they are, this is a hobby. Coffee is, is a luxury and people do it because they love just do something with coffee. Nobody needs it, so it's pure fun interest. And they want to learn something about it. So that's what we're doing in these seven emails. And we're sending them back to the page each time to another blog uh, post to read further and so on. But only one link per email. So that's very important, in the, in, especially in the beginning. So we want to build trust. And we don't want to sell our product yet because it's not. It's not time to sell at the moment. And how do we know that people are actually interested? We know by um, tracking them and giving them points for each interaction. So we give them points. We have, this is, as I said in the beginning, this is super basic. So we give them points for each email they are opening, they get one point. And you can do this with the points trigger in um, in Mautic, which is nice. So you don't need to build it in the campaign. You can, obviously, but we don't do this here. It's marketing emails, each of these. So they get it in a way only once in their user journey. So we can do it on a global base with the points driven model. So they get one point if they open one. Obviously, we do this at every email. And in the end, we know who wants to have great coffee and who is interested in this kind of content or not. So there we can segment again, start our first sale basically. So what we did is every contact who has more than three points after the seven days gets into the, into the first sale form. So it's, it's super simple. And I love to simplify and not overcomplicate uh, things. And basically, I mean, selling and marketing is basically go as often to the market and tell somebody, hey, I'm here, how are you doing? And in eventually, as soon as the person responds and says, ah, you're here again, nice, this is great, we can eventually start selling and tell them, often and more often that you have this great product and it would serve your needs. So that's what we do with the first text form. So we sell and sync. So it's very important to, and, and everybody who connects online shops with Mautic knows about this, it's very important to synchronize the data somehow. And <coughs> this is what we're doing in the second part of the sales form. And the second part of this um, blueprint in the sales form. So um, the only in the sales form, it's 
the opposite, basically, to what we did in the trust building or in the one of them. So we're pitching the product very direct because we know now they're responding, so they like to open our emails, so they are open to get the actual um, solution to solve, to solve the problem, which would be have a better coffee than the two Europeans um, from the supermarket. And then use your settings guide to make the perfect settings and enjoy your coffee in your pajamas at home, basically for free. So what we're doing is we send them a, a direct sales letter, basically, but very short, with one link, here you can purchase the coffee. And this is the solution to your problem. So what do we do to understand, did they buy something? We need to sync to, in this case we are using WooCommerce, so we're syncing it to, to marketing. And we just sync the order status, very basically. So as soon as we know, okay, there is an order, we just send them a quick upsell, which would be coffee glasses. Because in a nice glass, your coffee tastes even better. So we have the opportunity to sell them a quick upsell, which is very basic, but uh, it's a very good opportunity to make to, to create more revenue very quickly at this point because they're super engaged. They just opened their wallet for us, so now is the point to sell some. Eventually, if they if they became a customer, we need to change the stage, and this is a waiting stage, so they cannot fall down anywhere to just lead to our marketing qualified or sales qualified. They will um, be a customer forever. So, if they're not opening the first email, or if they're not purchasing something, we just do exactly the same thing again. Obviously, the copy is a little bit different in the email, but we do the same thing over and over and over again, four times. If they didn't buy, at this stage, we just stop, because why bother? And then we can warm up them at another level, because they stay sales qualified, and eventually drop down to marketing qualified again if they don't interact with the company. So, as I said before, um, how do you synchronize all this stuff? Um, we are using automation to synchronize. That's, um, I guess, a lot of you already know automation. So it's uh, a nice way to synchronize uh, programs with via the APIs. And we found that no WooCommerce plugin actually did what we wanted to do, so we could make this with automation really quickly. And it works very nice. Very nice. I mean, in peaks, we have like approximately 200 orders a day. That's the peaks, and everything works. It's, it's, it's a charm. So it, it, it's really nice and really worth looking into. And it then is a commitment. So back to the story. In theory, if they became a customer, they are now happy, satisfied, and have a good cup of coffee in their hands. So, next thing we really need to do, and what most people don't care about, especially non-marketers, or people who just say, okay, that's what I wanted to do, so let's move on, and let's sell more, or whatever is analyzed. So we definitely need to analyze at this point. And Mautic is actually very powerful to analyze what happens and so on and so forth, but it's very difficult to use the reports. So at least that's what we found. So at this point we need to step in and say, okay, let's, let's do this proactive and build something um, to understand why did the people why did people buy and why um, um, do they still hang around? Why do they open the emails? Which email didn't get opened? And so on and so forth. So only when we know that, we can truly 
do something else and build on top. So we are analyzing four things which are again very basic and super easy to, to digest. That's page visits, so how many people are actually on the page. It's form submissions. We only have one form in this in this um, structure, which is nice. So it's super easy. You could have more forms which lead into the same um, um, report. So it doesn't matter if you use pop-ups and so on and so forth, you can put it in the same report as well. Um, then you need to do an email report and take the data you want to digest and a segment report. Um, the reporting thing could be a speech for itself or a talk for itself. So I'm just going here, I'm just rushing through that very quickly, but if you want to know something, especially so specifically what we're doing and how we do it, um, let's talk about this. So in Google Data Studio, we are building something like this, like that at the end. The only caveat is we need to do it manually at the moment because we didn't find something what works for us um, to automatically put the exported data from Maltic into a Google Sheet or whatever, CSV, update the CSV, append it to make it um, um, by date. But anyway, we can do this um, for each week or for each month and it would look like that. And this, this data is not from from Arnie, it didn't allow us to, to show its actual data here. The only thing is at the beginning of the Here you can point out very, in, in, with the that you make in the end. I mean, you can um, play around with first time, it's super nice, but then you need to get the attribution data into your modding system. But basically, you see the page hits, then the form submissions, one of funnels, or a starters, 41 of funnels, and you can segment this, all of these points. Then starters for the sales funnel, and in the end, purchases. So it's, it's very easy to come up with a chart for your client to show them, hey, this is actually worth doing email marketing. Because as soon as somebody sees that, the person is really understanding, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense, let's do more of that. That makes more sense than just do social media content, which we don't know if it does anything for our brand. So um, this is really nice. And also you can see the drop-off uh, um, rates, you can see the unsubscribes, the bounces, and so on and so forth, which you need to, um, to keep track of to understand of course, the IP reputation and um, to understand how many people are actually interested in your content and which mail you should A B test, for example, or which page you should A B test, or which form you should make another form of, probably, to gain these numbers. So, as soon as we understood what to do, we can introduce the next funnel, or we can start selling again to people who are customers already. So the resale funnel is only for customers. So nobody else can enter it, and a customer can enter it, and we did do this, um, or we did this um, after 21 days after the delivery. So we tracked the delivery, sent this to Altec, it's all done by the commerce and then the end, which is nice. And um, then we start the sales funnel, the resell funnel. And so that's the third part. And the resell funnel is basically we are asking um, people to help us in the beginning because we need to warm up again. It's 21 days, so it's three weeks. No, it's at least 21 days. So it's actually around 30 days because they make the order 
the order needed to be processed, the coffee needed to be delivered, then the coffee needs to um, to wait a few days because otherwise it's very sour. So it needs a few days because it's so fresh to get to a stage where you can drink it. And then um, we wait these 21 days and then people are cold already again. So we need to reintroduce something. We need to come up with something to connect with them again. Because they are in their own, in their own um, world. So we put them on a pedestal, which is very important because people like to be put on pedestals. And people like to be the ones in focus and the ones in charge and People like to have power to decide, do I help this guy or do I not? So um, the first thing here in the top left corner is we check if they gave us a review already in the shop. And if not, so if yes, we just end this campaign and put them in, in a different campaign, which is not on this one. Um, but if they didn't give us a, uh, a, a review, we can ask them for help. So we literally ask them, hey, could you help me? And I think that's, that's in, in marketing terms, that's, that's the easiest way to connect to somebody, to ask for help, be honest, and say, hey, I couldn't do this without you. So you're in charge. And if they reply, so if they are really interested and say, yeah, I just sent you the review and this is amazing, of course I'm going to help you, we need to stop the automated campaign because otherwise they would be asked again and again and again and don't, I'm, I'm not taking it seriously. So we need to, to, to track if they um, replied, if they replied, we need to stop the campaign. So we need to reply. On that, um, we need to reply them um, um, by hand, which luckily aren't too many people. Um, but on a complaint, and complain at the beginning that it's too much work, and we need to find something else, and we need to skip that part, and so on, because he didn't want to cope with the emails. Um, anyway, if they not reply but open, which is the thing we want them to do actually. <laughs> so if they open it, we ask them, oh no, sorry, I, I messed it totally up. Um, in the beginning, we asked them, of course, how did you like the coffee? So that's the thing. <laughs> so if they reply, we stop the campaign. And this is only for like getting an honest, or ask them honestly, how did you like the product? Without sales link, without anything. It's just from friend to friend, basically. And if they open it, we can send them an email and ask them, could you help me? And there we start. Could you give me a review? Because this is very important for my business. It's very important for your friends, because then they see your review and trust me and my product more. So it's a win-win, basically, for everybody. And we all use reviews, even if we say, nah, you cannot trust it. We are trusting the five stars, which is to its psychology, and everybody trusts five stars more than zero stars. So that's what happens. So um, we asked them, could you give us a review? And then we just tracked, did they visit the thank you for your review page? Because if they did, because it's hidden, if they visited it, we know they gave us a review. So after the review, we can send them a direct sales letter again and say, hey, thank you for, for the review, that's amazing. Now it's time to purchase the next coffee because you love it. So here you get it. And then we stop the campaign. And the other um, thing, what could happen is they do not visit the review page. So we ask them again to give us a review because we don't want to only use one shot. So we use a second shot to ask them again and do the same thing again. And 
Eventually, if they if they not respond to anything and don't give the review, we just send them a sales step. Very blunt. <laughs> and say, hey, anyway, buy a new pack of coffee. It's time. Because it's four weeks already, almost. So the, the probability is very high that they actually really work off enough. Or otherwise, they end up with two euro coffee beans from the supermarket. And the other thing, what could, be, could happen is that they not respond on anything, don't open the emails. If they would open it, we would, so we sent them like, in the beginning, how do you like it? Then, if they're not opening it, we play with subject lines, which is the only thing to, to trigger that they actually open the email. So, then we ask, Do you like it eventually? Actually, do you do you like the coffee or don't? And if they're not opening again, we ask them, is everything all right or did we do something wrong? So there we honestly want to understand what's the problem, why do you not open my emails? Because and that's the beauty of honest brain, it's people really think they are befriended with. Because it's, it's, I mean, his YouTube channel and his Facebook groups and so on and so forth, people think they are friends with them, which is amazing. And they are very engaged usually. So it's, it's possible to ask, what did I do wrong? And a lot of people are responding to it. That's what I told you. Of the blue, sometimes on emails, because he actually needs to treat them nicely, <laughs> because otherwise they would lose the trust, and so on. So, yeah, it's possible, anyway. And eventually we try in each of these emails, did you open? If yes, we just start our review process. If not, we just send in the end, but like, it's time for your next pack of coffee. <clears throat> so, Somehow, the one way or the other, we can. It's basically doing the money. So the first sale is to cover the costs for a lead, and the second sale makes the money. And as soon as we understand what people really like and how they're responding, how they like the coffee, and so on and so forth, we can build something to fall in love with, in this case, Frank or with Anna. So we try to create evangelists. And evangelists are people who love your product and who would market it for you because they are just seeing cheap beans in their friend's cupboard and say, you can't drink this. Buy that one, it's so much better. So we try to proactively create these um, raving fans or evangelists. So this would be a, a, a typical recurring sales funnel, so everybody can build it. Um, you don't need a review funnel in between. You can use something like that to create recurring sales. And so that's the last part in this drawing. So what do we do here? We ask them again, can you help me? Because you are the person with the network and you have friends and you actually don't support, I don't know, uh, Nespresso and with the non-coffee product selling them as the best coffee in the world. So you are in charge to help people to actually buy good coffee. So we are sending them these emails. And as in the, in the other funnel, we have the not opening a stream here on the top. We would say, okay, can you help me? I need your help, please. So actually, it's, we found that it's very engaging if we tell people, if we, like, if we are, how do I say, if, if we are, Beating them to help us. So, because people.
like to be um, in charge, and, and or, or people like to be empowered. So this helps. And then so this would really do a difference. And eventually, when they open the email, we say that in this time we don't um, ask for review. In this in this case, we ask for sharing the product. So for sharing it, there is a landing page. There is a landing page um, where they get content and stuff that they could share it <coughs> on social media with the friends or send it by email to their friends. So we can easily track the page and go on from there, send our um, um, subscription offer. Because Anna obviously has a coffee subscription. So you can subscribe and then you get coffee. One, two, three, four kilos a month. Depends how much coffee you want to enjoy and what your heart rate should be. So we'll give it a second shot, like before. And if they're not opening it, we send them a blunt offer to just take the subscription because it makes so much sense and it would avoid you not having coffee at home and need to buy some of the cheap stuff, which is bad for the environment, bad for the whole world, bad for your friends, because they don't, you have good coffee all the time. So that's what we're trying to do. And then it works. Whoop. There we go. And if nothing of this works, we would just, oh, okay, I don't have this on slide. And if nothing would work, we would just send them directly at the top to the um, to the offer in the end. So that's how they come to be raving fans. So as soon as they have the subscription, it's very likely that they stick around for a long time and open the newsletters, share the newsletters, share the stuff on social media or with their friends who are in their kitchen just tell people, hey, come over for coffee, and then they are talking about the coffee, which is word of, um, word of mouth which is basically the best marketing you could ever build because you, you trust your friends over any website even though your friends are totally wrong. So what could you do to create funnels like this? It's of course not only a review funnel or um, a, a subscription model or something. You can like try to build better together funnels. So, Let's do something together for a great cause and let's help each other to, I don't know, be environment friendly or whatever. You can do accessories funnels. So if you are selling, I don't know, um, 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 messenger bags, you can sell the accessory for your keys or for your, I don't know what else, um, next to this bag as a resale funnel to gain trust again and to make an upsell. You can make classic upsell funnels like, okay, you want this, maybe you need this. And you can do, of course, the seasons or evergreen funnels, which are very important in every marketing mix because we have Christmas, we have New Year's Eve, we have um, spring break, we have schools out, blah, 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 all these things. So you can implement the same structure over and over and over again in your marketing for different um, seasons, um, evergreens, which are um, recurring events in our community. So do this and use this and warm up, analyze, Sell and repeat. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Alex. It's a great presentation. Anyone has questions at this point? Okay. Next question. I move to the far end for you. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for this case study, really fascinating, fascinating and also really detailed. In the details, 
uh, it could be seen that you uh, probably. Um, so how, how do you deal with the fact that, that email opening is no longer reliable these days? Yes. Is there a good, good workaround? Yes. Um, you can, so we try to build a lot with like landing pages to uh, just track if they visited a landing page, but it's a very big problem actually at the moment. And we're not sure how to cope with all the difficulties with tracking and um, I mean now Gmail introduced one month ago that the pixel is just not fired if you don't click on show many images. So um, it's, it's going to be um, a difficulty, but we try to, to be creative and, and um, send them to landing pages more and more in Mautic. So, because if they are on a landing page in Mautic and not on the other, on the other pages, it's easier to, to track them. But anyway, we will see what comes up with the next um, cookie policies and so on, what the browsers are forced to do or what the browsers are going to do. It's, it's a difficult thing, that's true. And it's, it's not, I mean, I, around 50% of the people cannot be tracked. So that's the reason why we always have this non-opening um, line. So we need to do something there because we want to offer them in any case. One thinking about the false positives, about the Google image proxy pages, things, etc. Doris, uh, can I ask a second quick one? Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, about the upsell, in the very beginning, you said you like the idea to, after the first sale, you send them a quick upsell, like the copy, copy glasses thing, I guess. Um, that's a typical thing that you do within the shop normally. Uh, would you say you intentionally leave something aside so you have some, some uh, story for the next email or is it just a small story? Yeah, I think it, it, so in Arne's case, the upsell comes on the website as well. Okay. So after um, checking out, you can go there. Um, we are playing around with bump orders as well, so like inside the cart. But what we found is that a lot of people, or not a lot, I don't know the percentage, but um, many of the people anyway are opening the upsell email because most of them think it has to do something with the order at the moment, which is pending, so they're opening it. So the open rate is, is very high, so the likelihood that, that they get the message is very, very high in the email because everybody does bump orders in the cart, or not everybody, but a lot of people have bump orders and upsells directly in the cart or click funnels, how they click through. And we think if we can reach them through a second channel, the message is graved in deeper and they are thinking again about it for like the second time already if they saw the bump order. Or if they didn't see a bump order, they would get the message to, to buy something. So it just raises the possibility to sell more. And this is what we try to do in general, to raise the, pro the possibility to, to sell more to, to, um, to visitors. Thanks. I can't wait for the next coffee. Yeah, perfect. Okay. That's good. <laughs> I know a brand who is very good coffee. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah, you can come back. It worked. <laughs> I have a couple of comments. Um, first of all, is the part where you say analyzed. Um, and we integrated Motec with Google Data Studio. It, it did not work that well and due to the fact that Data Studio is still fresh, like a new product. Mm -hmm. So we connected to the database directly. And we ran some query to, to do that. Um, it worked, but it did not work very really well. Yeah. So maybe you need to look into other tools like Blocker or uh, Power PI that would be more effective. And it, it would be great like if you can contribute the queries that you have 
like um, in terms of performance for emails, for campaigns, inside multi-level moment, especially for visualization. Yes. And this is something that a lot of marketers are looking for. So that, that can be a big contribution. Yes. Yes, I will. I will contribute it, and it's it's one of the things I I'm, I'm very keen about talking about and how to how to improve the reporting system at the moment because it's I think the reporting system is amazing actually, and you can get all the data you need, but yeah, developers understand it and, and, and people are deep in the, in the in the system understand it, but yeah. And, at the board, it's very important to show it only the core vitals. And, yeah. nice. Let's talk about it afterwards. Seriously? I'm very interested. <laughs> <laughs> you just wait until we've gone over. Yeah, no, 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 for the next one. Yeah, left side, right side. <laughs> now you're earning your, your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> one question in the I think was the resale funnel when you put, uh, based a lot on the on the reviews. Um, what happens actually if a customer gives a bad or low low review? Do you also say then thank you for your nice review? Here's the offer, uh, or yeah. is there a separate kind of line what you then? Yes, yes, of course. So we can from WooCommerce, we can um, um, we can get the the review. Um, value as well and we introduced that because we ran into this <laughs> and just sent them hey guys thanks that's amazing <laughs> do you have to buy the next one <laughs> yeah we had exactly this so it's important to to also stream that into it it's it's for me it was very difficult to to decide okay what to show when what not to show because yeah i think it's a lot to digest yeah, but then you yeah. would probably give them more time or for reselling or in with a bad review yeah no we ask them directly to respond to the support and and get back and let's help them to solve the problem because it's actually it should be really the best product available so yeah thank you uh, I, I also have a question that uh, you mentioned that there are 600,000 or 800,000 views and lots of people visiting the page and you have one the magnet currently. So people get into the funnels only if they want to find you in their coffee machine. Yeah. Basically. Exactly. And are you tempted making more lead magnets or you don't mm -hmm. think it's a good idea? No, we're thinking about doing different lead magnets. Um, the it's not it's not even rolled out the whole page, it's, it's very difficult to find this lead magnet actually because Anna is promoting it only sometimes on social media and it's not something which bumps up on the website or something and there are a few reasons for that because it's at the moment the, how do you say, is it the roastery who, who roasts the coffee, I'm not sure. But they just bought a bigger machine to make 35 tons in one batch. And now they need to update already again <laughs> because this guy just grew, it, this guy exploded with the, with the amount what, what Arm needs because it wasn't, it, it, I mean, it's nice that it grew so quickly. But it leveled everything up, and as you can see, it's very difficult for him at the moment to sell more. So we need to to keep the profile low and hide basically the, the opportunity to get into this funnel immediately. So that's that's a, 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 how do you say it? it's that's a problem at the moment in production. It's a, it's a luxury problem. It's a total. Yeah. It's a yeah. It's a real luxury problem, and it's. The numbers are very good, but if we would run the funnel all the time, it would be, it would grow all the time. But um, to create a product like this, it's very difficult to maintain the quality, and I'm as keen to, to produce it on, on this extremely high level. So it cannot just say, okay, let's just move to a really big grocery, because the big groceries, the first 
two tons are just batches before and so on, then you need to throw away a lot of it and so on. So these are the, the structural problems with maintaining high quality in, in such a product. Yeah, do you do any segment emails besides the funnels and how do you sync them or exclude or duplication? Yes, of course. So we have uh, housekeeping, like um, we are deleting leads which are not um, responding to nothing. So after the after the first warm-up funnel, if a person didn't open anything, we just delete them because okay, you can opt in another time if they're really interested. And um, so this is where what we're doing. We are segmenting, of course. We are segmenting um, all the different. Um, Processes, um, processing order, on hold, and all these things. <laughs> and um, what else? There are a lot of tags which are coming through. We're tagging the people also when they land on, on some landing pages. But I would need to take a look. I can take a look afterwards. We can, we can no, I meant like regular newsletters. That's what I meant. If yes. newsletters are yeah, sent yeah, yeah. Newsletter, time. Yes, so I think that's a very important thing in general. So in... Uh, just here in the navigator. In the beginning. So here we have this warm-up. So uh, oh, yeah. Here in the beginning. We have to warm up. So, and after this campaign, um, it's people um, need to do the double opt in, but they don't get immediate. So, we have a filter, a segmenting filter on the um, active newsletter campaign, and uh, the active newsletter segment, which says um, you need to be opted in, like newsletter yes, or newsletter true, and um, you must not be in, so excluding, say, um, one of our uh, campaign. So they must not get the newsletter in the first week next to the campaign, actually. We want them to focus only on this one of uh, campaign because in the newsletter, I mean, that's, that's the content which Anna says, uh, which Anna sends on very occasionally. So it's, it's, it's not selling each week a newsletter, which we want him to do, but he just says, I'm too busy, I don't care. <laughs> and, um, um, but we don't want to, like, we don't want to disturb the campaign, actually. We want to, we want to gradually um, improve the trust and not get something off topic, basically. For this time of, of the Thank you. Anyone? Anything? Cool. Um, thank you so much, Alex, for my time.